Okay, right on. Well, welcome to Masset Harbor and the Masset Dock where we've got uh, the Masset Marine Rescue and Royal Canadian Marine Search and Rescue vessel Tugwall warming up. Um, it's our Type 2 Titan uh, rescue vessel, fast response vessel. So it's for responding quickly when people need help in the water. And we've got a couple of uh, our volunteer crew members. We've got Doug and Chloe, um, who are <laughs> who are uh, met me down here, and we've got Sheldon, our coxswain, on board. The coxswain is the captain; he's in charge of the boat. Yeah. So for well over 20 years, 30 years, we've had uh, volunteer search and rescue on the water here in Masset. It started out as the Canadian Coast Guard Auxiliary and we went through a little uh, name change and became the Royal Canadian Marine Search and Rescue. Same organization though, and it's uh, been Masset Marine Rescue who has uh, been operating out of Masset and keeping all our volunteers trained up and ready to respond. So uh, our organization uh, supports us by helping us with <clears throat> fundraising and planning and uh, keeping this boat safely on the water with the people on it. And we do maybe between six and 10, and sometimes even more uh, rescues every year on the water. Um, sometimes it's uh, just because someone's broken down or run out of gas and we need to go tow them in. Sometimes they have no idea where they are, lost in the fog. And uh, sometimes they're straight up sinking. So uh, we will race out and, uh, and help get everybody home. Uh, I'm Douglas, Douglas Black. Uh, I've been on the islands for, on Haida Gwaii for about 11 years, almost 11 years. Uh, I worked at MAC for many years as the cook and then as a counsellor. Uh, I am a volunteer at the Masset Marine Rescue Society, RCM Star 45. Friends were involved um, and there seems to be, an, there's always a need for new members. There's always a need for new people to come in, new skills and new, uh, new perspectives. When we're involved in rescues, often they can be avoided. Often there are things that people could do before they go out that would uh, not, not leave them needing help. Uh, there's some key things. If you're going out in a motorboat, make sure your boat is fueled up, it's in good condition, you've checked it out, you know, batteries working well and charged, you've got PFDs for everybody, life jackets, um, you've got the correct uh, equipment, there's several things that you'd need on a boat, uh, on a vessel. Different size boats need different things, but you want flares and uh, an anchor, you know, if you lose power, you want to be able to stay still if you have to, you don't want to be washing up on shore comes down to kind of common sense. You want to be equipped with the suitable equipment, appropriate clothing. Uh, one thing you really want to have if you're going on the boat, well, we like to have anyway, uh, rubber boots. Because if you do have to go ashore, it's nice to be able to jump off and not have wet feet when you get ashore. Uh, checking the weather is a very important thing to do before you leave also. You know, if you, if you see that it's going to be getting worse in the afternoon, maybe you don't go out that day. Maybe you go out a day when the weather is more suitable. Yeah. Um, checking the tide is very important, especially around here. We have really impressive tides. You know, have like a 24 foot tidal range in some places. Um, and in Masset Inlet, and at other points, many other points around Haida Gwaii, you can get a really strong current coming or going, ebbing or flowing with the rising or falling tide. Yeah, thinking about the time of the year, how much light you have, how far you're expecting to go, when you're expecting to be back, letting someone know where you're going, when you'll be back, what to do if you don't check in at the right time. If you get into trouble, well, uh, it depends on what uh, resources you have with you. Uh, really, a basic piece of uh, equipment you should have is the VHF radio. Knowing how to use it before you have to use it is really important. Uh, knowing how to change channels and change the squelch, uh, which is like a, you know, can be very important. If you're hoping to hear something back from someone, the squelch can cancel them out if you turn it up too high. Most radios will have the 1-6 button because that's the international 
uh, channel for uh, distress. Um, yeah, knowing what to say if you're really in need of assistance, like it's life or death, then you're, you're saying mayday, mayday, mayday. If it's urgent but non-life-threatening, you know, it hasn't got too bad yet, then uh, pan, 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 pan. Which are funny words, but they're made so that you don't mistake them for other words. Uh, heave, heaving line. We have multiple on board. There's one here, yeah. a buoyant heaving line. So if someone does go overboard, you can throw one. There's one there. There's one at the stern. There's also one here. We have three on board. So if anyone's in the water and they need, to, need assistance, they need to be pulled out, we can throw them something and pull them back in. Because you want to avoid at all costs getting in the water. Yeah, especially around here, especially at this weather and time of the year. Yeah, it's very cold. Re research, you know, do the research, check it out, see what you need. Like if, you, if more makes you, you know, you want to bring more and it helps you feel safer, bring more. Bring, you know, blankets and extra water and, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. We have all that on board. We have food, blankets, water. We have a hypothermia kit on board. We have an extensive first aid kit, uh, AED. Yeah, one thing about uh, small vessels is, you know, maybe this is a pretty large vessel and most of the boats here tied up are, but if you're heading out in a kayak or a canoe, which, you know, can feel a little more casual, it can be a little easier to sort of skimp on the, on the safety gear. But uh, with those boats especially, it's really important because if you get into trouble in a really small boat, you don't, often it's very urgent <laughs> and you want to have the equipment, you know, sort of within arm's reach. Having the, the extra line, you know, like same thing, like a buoyant heaving line, the baler, a sponge, PFD always, you know, and not thinking, oh, the weather's great, I'm just gonna take my PFD off and soak up some sun. Keep it on, because I fell asleep in my kayak once and <laughs> I'm glad I had my PFD on. I didn't, nothing bad happened, it was very calm, but I'd hate to think what would happen if I hadn't and something happened. So all of our volunteers, we sign up and we just get lots of training in safety. Like we've got um, people have to take their radio operators course and first aid course. And uh, we also need to take something called the pleasure craft operating course, which is just basically how to operate a boat safely in Canada. Once we get that, we get all sorts of new training. We're gonna be out on the, on the water for dozens of hours a year and uh, taking courses in electronic navigation and, and then we do all kinds of like specialized training like shore extraction and search patterns and uh, and how to get people safely onto the boat if they're in the water and uh, you know towing exercises and we'll work with the RCMP because they have a vessel Hyda Fisheries they have a bunch of vessels and they're on the water all the time the Canadian Coast Guard they have a station in Mass or in Sandspit and also in uh, Prince Rupert. And then also uh, occasionally we'll have some, the bigger guns come out and we'll have the uh, Buffalo search and rescue uh, fixed wing aircraft will come out or the Carmarant helicopter, rescue helicopter. And they come in from Comox for some of the bigger searches and we'll be on the water while they're uh, zooming around in the air. How do you request assistance when you're a boat in trouble? There's like a few different things you can have a call on VHF-16 for Mayday. You could um, use your, uh, you know, the EPIRB, the vessel locating uh, signal on board by, or on the radios, we'll send out a uh, digital selective calling at the SC emergency. You could have smoke on board. You got access to all your flares, a big uh, triangle, it's yeah, triangle, right? Triangle, triangle yeah. on board from the air always means you're in uh, trouble. For some reason, a black, ball over top of a black square <laughs> no one's ever called for help that way it's like, <laughs> like oh look at that guy no one that survived <laughs> yeah, no one survived. <laughs> it's like the most complicated way to ask for assistance but uh, anyway so we we're I was discussing all the different ways that someone could ask for assistance oh waving your hands in there no one's ever saying hello when they're doing this they're always like help <laughs> the probably the 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 quickest rescue we've ever done was i was doing the 
it was we call vessel orientation with new crew um, and uh we're sitting there and it was right at dusk and then i just saw like a twin star flare like right over there by the mountain and i was like that's that's a flare that's one way right there let's let's go let's go get him and it was just getting dark and we went out and there was like a little boat with two guys completely no power just like just spinning around and heading down the inlet and they had one flare in their pocket oh. and they waited they'd been out for hours and they waited till they're in front of mass and they're like i hope someone's looking <laughs> fired off so we picked them up just as they were heading for the pilings of the main street dock oh. just drifting into them and we like went and lassoed them up and dragged them in that was fun so it was a quick good response yeah, yeah good orientation yeah we can take uh, we're so for full members uh, it would be 18 and over but we take junior members as well for like you know people who are exceptionally interested in this um, you can be 16 and over and you can um, do the training and and uh, then you'll be all set for when it's time to go out on a rescue by the time you're 18 but uh, the training can start as early as 16. Everyone, um, us in action. Okay. I guess that is the boat in action. Yeah. So uh, the plan is we're going to head up the inlet. So we're going to keep the dock on our right. And you see the, the nav marker there. The, it's called a day marker with the old red triangle. Keep that on your port side. All right. <laughs> it actually gets easier to steer when you go faster. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah. Put that in full. Put both those buckets full forward so uh, you're the driver so the crew on the boat can include a coxswain who's the person who's ultimately in charge in this case it will be Sheldon and uh, then the driver is typically gonna it could be the same person or it could be someone different and then the person who's on navigation could be different or the same as well and the person who's on navigation is in charge of like making sure that we're going the right direction and so they'll be communicating with the driver in this case it'll be like okay we're you know we'll keep that that marker on our port side and then just make sure we stay on course sometimes it'll involve looking at the compass and sometimes it's just based on visual like you know 10 degrees to port 10 degrees to starboard or it could be like go at like you know uh, 360 north off the compass so the depth you can see on the screen in front of us there, 73 feet. But and then this boat, boat yeah, it's like two feet or something. It's really, really shallow because it's uh, the jet, so there's no there's no motor down there. Um, but yeah, two to four feet, I guess, is where we'd be getting a bit nervous. Let's uh, pick up the RPM a bit. It's a nice day. Should we... Uh, get inside and get this puppy rolling yeah, sure. yeah. right so uh yeah. there's a process for transferring yeah. to the front and uh i guess sheldon can step you through that i'll go strap in
you know, the towing underway out in, uh, in the open water, that's, uh, that's a beautiful bird. I think that's a merganser. <laughs> oh, he's gone into the shade. No. Oh.